Hey everyone, Reed here. Today I'm here to announce yet another powerful performance analyzer feature that just came out in Power BI. Now, you may remember the performance analyzer pane that came out for Power BI earlier this year. In fact, you might remember that I did a video on this. More on that tool can be seen in my video here. But this video is going to focus on the new Query Diagnostics tool in the Query Editor for Power Query, which breaks down the performance of all the queries in your report, including tracers and a lot of other advanced information. So let's hop into Power BI and get started. So I've thrown together a file that has a series of queries with a few different data sources, some from some local files, some from some databases, and a little bit of data from my Google Analytics data as well. And what I want to show you here is the ability um, as you're actually doing preview evaluations for the preview data here and any kind of performance evaluation, you can actually come up to this new tab or tools and notice that there is a start and stop diagnostics. Now I'll be the first to admit, I don't have a super in-depth background as far as SQL performance and other stuff goes. So this is probably somewhat similar to a lot of the SQL tracers and other things that can exist more for the database and backend developer world. My focus has always been more of the modeling and reporting, but I know just enough to be able to take this data, we're going to extract it, and I'm going to show you a report that I built off of it. So I'm going to go ahead and click Start Diagnostics. And now what that does is it's running tracers on all of the stuff going in um, and coming out of this uh, these queries here. So if you notice at the bottom, it does say Recording Traces uh, right down here. And as I go through these data previews, it's going to be collecting the data on how long it takes to pull in the preview data here. A lot of the metadata comes through this. Plus as well, when you go ahead and hit apply, it will do the same thing and gather data as it's pulling that data into the model itself and collect all that in terms of milliseconds passed for all of these different categories and scenarios. And the end result being is when you're done, you can click stop diagnostics and then it will create two little files down here, a diagnostics, and a diagnostics detailed. Now, the only difference I could honestly tell between these two tables, because they both share 18 columns and the same names, is that this one's just more detailed. Um, so I built my report actually off of this one specifically here. Um, and the best way I found to do that is I built a file that's available for download as part of this video. Um, but all you need to do is you need to right click on this once you've created your tracer file, go to advanced editor, Go ahead and select all and copy this data here just from the advanced editor. So copy all that M code, hit done. And now we're going to pop over to my query diagnostic report. And when you open this after downloading it, you will see a landing page here that instructs you on how to add your data that we just copied into this report. So it mentions to use this file, copy the end code from the original diagnostic details and whatever date time you had from that query. And then you'll paste it into the M code in this file. So to do that, we'll go up to home. Go to Edit Queries, go to Diagnostics Detailed here, right click and go to the Advanced Editor, and then select all and paste, and paste that same thing in here, and that way this will update. I'll cancel out of this because I already have demo data in here, discard. Um, go ahead and just select Close and Apply, and when you do that, this file will refresh and populate with all of your data. And these screenshots will help show you how to do those as well. And the result is once you've done that, I've built these two report pages that contain all of that data. So we can see here, this is from more of a query diagnostics perspective. You have the exclusive duration in seconds, meaning how long did it take um, by data source kind. So the data sources here and how many seconds this took overall, as far as all of the actions that I was doing, um, as well as also category by the exclusive duration and the Pareto percentage here at the top. So this is actually very similar to the performance analyzer report that I had for the data model and DAX and everything, but I adapted this for the query evaluator. Um, and we can see there that the data sources um, pulling the data from it took most of the time. The evaluation engine took a bit more. We have some other things as well as the document evaluator, trace gaps, preview. Um, I'm going to imagine because I'm connecting to some Excel files, this document evaluator is attached to that. But at the moment, the Microsoft um, documentation on this is a little thin, so I'm not 100% positive on a few of these. Again, my focus has always been more on modeling and uh, the report development. Um, so I'll leave it to you to kind of explore this file and you know, maybe let me know what you think in the comments section as well. And then of course I provide a table down here at the bottom that breaks down all those fine level details where it shows you what query it is. In that case, you can see if I drill up all the way, there's all the queries that I had in my model. And under those queries, we have the category, uh, what type of evaluation or thing is happening um, based on the category under those categories. It also has the actual name of the applied step, so change type, etc. 
um, AdventureWorks connection, the database, uh, the source, uh, any transformations that might have happened if you were doing more like unpivots and other things like that. And just continuing all the way down, the type of operation that was, as well as the resource of the connection that I was requiring for that. Now I have a very similar view over here for the data source diagnostic summary, where it focuses more from a data source perspective. So the Pareto chart up here is now using the data source kind to categorize the columns. And then the table at the bottom also focuses from a data source kind perspective and then data source queries as well in here. So you can actually see um, in the data source queries, anytime they have one of these select statements, that's actually when query folding is happening. Um, so that is one thing that I identified is the, the times that the query folding is happening. So I actually created a DAX calculated column in here called is native query. Um, and that's true or false uh, based on uh, the this calculation that's happening in here. So let me just go ahead and show you that. Now I'm not 100% positive this will work all the time, but at least I'm assuming that any time that the data source query in here starts with the word uh, select in lowercase, that means that query folding is happening. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just flag that as a true or false. Um, it might not work perfectly, but there's no actual flag column at this time in here. So I thought this would just be helpful to have to be able to filter true and false. Does the data source query have information in there that starts with a select statement? And you can even see a brief description in here provided by Microsoft that mentions that query diagnostics is a powerful new feature that allows you to determine what the mashup engine is doing at authoring time. Currently, it allows you to understand what sorts of queries are emanating from your file, what slowdowns you might be running into during authoring or refresh, and what kind of background events are happening. And I'm sure this will continue to get better with time, uh, but this is a great new addition for Power BI that I'm really glad we just have one more way to analyze performance and especially trace timing uh, as we want to test queries when we change them and see if they're getting faster or slower without having to use the SQL profiler. And again, this file will be available for download as long as you are a blog subscriber and you will have access to my blog files page. And that about covers it for this video. If you liked this video, please click or smash that like button below. Now, if you have any comments for this video or you like anything about this report, please add that to the comment section below. And if this is your first time seeing this video or you want to see more of these awesome videos, please click that subscribe and notification button. And otherwise, I will see you in my next video.